Um, my name is Jerry Bartlett, and I work here at SUNY Canton uh, in the Department of Online Learning. And I do a lot of work at home as far as uh, being off the grid, um, things to do with energy conservation, um, educating people about those things. Uh, a lot of my hobbies are things to do with, uh, um, I guess you want to call it self-sufficiency maybe, off-grid. Um, things to do with energy and whatnot. There's transportation projects, home projects, and things of that nature. There's a lot of projects that are absolutely not about me. It's about what an average person can do if they're willing to take the time to learn about this kind of stuff um, and then take what you learn and apply it. Um, at heart, I am a conservationist. Um, I don't try to sway or, uh, what's the word I want to use, uh, convert anybody into thinking green. But I don't believe there's anything wrong with conserving for the next generation of people coming up. Um, if we continue to use resources at the alarming rate that we're using them, there will be no nothing left for the next person. So, a little bit about Centurion. Um, that's the little car that I ended up putting together and finishing. The love affair with Centurion started way back in 1982. Um, I was actually a lot younger then, and the United States just went through an energy crisis in the 70s. So I got to see gas rationing and things of that nature. And during that time, fuel efficient cars were just starting to come alive a little bit. And But there was nothing out there to really excite people. Um, they were just small little boxy cars. Well, in 1982, a defunct magazine, defunct now, called Mechanics Illustrated ran Centurion uh, on the front cover. This was a do-it-yourself project that anybody was supposed to be able to build in their backyard. You literally built this car. If you did everything that those $17 paper plans said to do, you could get up to 128 miles per gallon. The idea that you could do it yourself was very, very intriguing to a lot of people. But the question was, would it do what they said? I found this event down in Watkins Glens, New York. It's called the Green Grand Prix. And to settle the question of whether this car would actually pull its miles per gallon or not, I entered this contest. Uh, this was their 10th year. It's a miles per gallon competition. It's over 100 miles on the Watkins Glen track. There's all sorts of rules and regulations and the car has to be road legal and you gotta have two people in it and the whole nine yards. So anyway, I took this little car down there and um, I won. Winning the Green Grand Prix was uh, really quite an experience for me. And um, I'm sure it was quite an experience for a lot of the other people too. There was probably 250 to 300 students at the Grand, Green Grand Prix, businesses, individuals, etc. Uh, you had brand new cars like Prius and Honda Insights, uh, compressed natural gas cars were there, Pure Electrics were there, so pretty much everything was represented. Uh, it is Toyota sponsored, so it's kind of a big deal. And um, I know when I showed up with Centurion, probably nobody gave it a second look because it looked like a legalized go-kart. It's that small. And um, of course it's quite loud because it's a diesel, it knocks. And um, again, I don't think anybody really gave it a lot of thought. Before the actual race itself, I had a chance to talk with uh, quite a few of the people that were there at the event. And I got a good rundown on uh, certain strategies and things that people were doing. Uh, but I really never said anything about Centurion. I just just basically decided to, to you know run this thing as kind of a underdog I guess you would say and um, anyway when the event started um, actually out on the track uh, right from the first lap I knew this was going to be a record if you have an idea of something that you want to do uh, in general don't let somebody tell you that it cannot be done um, think it through, be persistent, um, do your homework, and uh, just keep trying. If you fail once and it doesn't break the bank, uh, continue your project 
uh, if you are persistent, you'll be successful. That probably is message number one. It doesn't, and it doesn't matter what it is. You don't have to build a car or a motorcycle. It can be anything. That would be message number one. Anybody that that has a project they want to do, and I, I try to encourage people. I try to empower them. And my starting point is something very simple that anybody could do. For example, um, changing a light bulb out for a more efficient one. Uh, incandescent light bulbs are, are very inefficient. They're hot when, when they're on and you can't even hold them with your hand. If I could get somebody to unscrew one of those and screw in a very efficient LED bulb, which looks the same. In fact, when it's on, you wouldn't be able to tell the light from it, probably from the incandescent. Um, people then begin to realize, you know, uh, that wasn't very hard. That's something that I could do. And I know that seems very simplistic, but that's where it has to start. You have to build, you have to give uh, somebody uh, something they can do that's within their grasp um, that builds their confidence just a little bit. And then kind of go with that idea. Um, make the things a little bit more complex as it goes along, but certainly within their abilities to do. Uh, then the whole conversation begins to look a lot different. It's not so um, overwhelming, it's not so complicated. Uh, people begin to entertain even bigger projects than what we might initially talk about because they have built that level of confidence. So uh, yeah, I think that's a very good starting point. If, if we wanted to take it to the extreme, which would be uh, my house, my off-grid house, or even the car that I did, it's kind of like changing that light bulb. Each piece of that car or each piece of that house is only one little tiny piece. I didn't do the whole thing at once. <laughs> that is overwhelming. I did it one light bulb at a time. The car, I did it a piece of fiberglass at a time. You know, it was all little bite-sized pieces. So yeah, that's where it has to start. Anything that, that I do or have done um, is kind of interesting because the bar that I set for myself going into every piece of this was that I had to do something that was replicable by anybody out there that was willing to try. So that means, for example, I can't smash atoms, okay? I don't have the ability to, to smash atoms like they do in the science world. If I was the only one that could smash atoms, <laughs> that would be of little use to you folks or anybody out there wanting to do these projects. But if I could bring it down to a level like changing a light bulb or something very simple, now it's replicable by you. So that is a criteria I set for every project that I did. It has to be doable by the average person. So what I wanted to bring up just real quickly is on the screen is something called usdebtclock.org. And even if people don't buy into the green movement or conservation or any of that type of stuff, this is something that's extremely hard to ignore. This particular clock that you're looking at is for the state of New York. And if you live in the state of New York, your debt per citizen right now is over $18,000. And as you can see by the numbers, it's rising. This is the rate at which we continue to spend and use resources and everything else. The clocks for all that stuff are very similar. If that doesn't grab your attention, there's something called the US National Debt Clock. It's put out by the same place as the state clock was. And if you look at this one real quick, the debt per citizen in this country right now is over $56,000. That's what each person that's watching this video owes right now in national debt. I don't know about you, but I didn't sign up for that. And if we're ever going to slow all of this consumption down and spending down and all of that, it's going to have to come from each one of us. Because as you can see by this clock and all of the different um, areas on it, nobody else is slowing down anything at all. This globe right here, I just want to share this quick little little story with you. Um, nobody uses these anymore. I actually got this globe out of the dump. Um, I know that sounds awful to some people, but uh, if something's good that I see in the dump, I'll pick it out if it's still usable. But this thing really caught my attention because when I saw this in the, in the garbage, 
I thought to myself, how sad. Isn't this symbolic of what we are doing today? We're literally throwing away this planet. And it's going to take somebody or a group of people to do just exactly what I did. To pull this planet, this beautiful planet that we have, out of the garbage pit that we've put it into. So, as you look at this globe, and I'm just going to spin it around real slow, just think about what you want this globe to look like down the world, folks. Because again, it's yours to do with whatever you want. You're the next group coming along. And if you don't make a decision, and you continue to let things go the way they are now, this will probably end up in the garbage just the way I found it.